Okay, so hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this stream of Hearts of Iron 4, where we are playing World Blaze. And I should have loaded the game already. Alright, let's get that going. First two episodes of Kenobi were good. Now starts the wait for the next episode. Nice. In fact, I'm uh, probably meeting up with Ben Magnus later to watch that. Uh, so the second stream today, the four o'clock one cancelled because I'm going to be out watching that. <laughs> Do I have my pillow and my tea? I have my pillow. See it right there. And I have my tea as well. In fact, I should probably take the tea bag out. Hot, hot, hot. Ow, 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 ow. Ah, spilled some. Ugh, oh, almost spilled the water as well, and that would have been a bigger disaster, because that would have been the whole glass. Let's move you back a bit so I don't do that again. Awesome. Let's tilt you down a bit more. There we go. How would you describe World Ablaze, sitting in the midpoint between Black Ice and Vanilla? It is deeper. It is a little bit more... I would say it's just deeper. I wouldn't say it's more complicated, it's just deeper. Whereas, well, um, Black Ice just kind of takes that complication, runs with it, and makes it unfun. So at the moment, and I'll give you a quick rundown of what's been going on since the last session. So it is currently 1938, 7th of July. Uh, Germany has done Anschluss, but nothing else yet. We are now guaranteeing the Republic of Poland. We have been focusing a lot of our efforts, of course, on the Navy. And in fact, I have 63 ships that have not yet been trained. My bad. Oops, don't do that, do that. Um, because what I need to do is... Have you join this fleet? And I want to make sure that we max you out to 99. We are going to have so many frigates, it's ridiculous. Like, how many ships do we have at this point? Uh, 488. Germany has about 120, of which 50 of them are submarines. And we have... 184 frigates and also 174 destroyers. So I think at sea we're going to be okay. I'm a little bit more concerned about our land forces at this point because we have now started to militarize. We have started to produce uh, Matilda tanks, Matilda 2s. Getting into it kind of late though. We are producing Spitfires. We should have a fairly decent number of aircraft by the time the war starts. And we are also now producing some Crown, Ca Crown Colony class light cruisers, uh, which are actually going to be finished relatively soon, um, which are going to be recons. And also two more Surrey class heavy cruisers. So yeah, things are progressing quite nicely, I would say. And we got the Canadian Mounties, <laughs> because of course we do. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. Okay, so in terms of focuses, we're currently working on the Royal Tank Corps because this is going to give us some heavy tank division templates so we can actually start using those heavy tanks. And then after that is done... Oh, that's for Hurricane and Blackburns. Hurricane, we haven't started with Blackburns yet. Interesting. And the subjects may soon raise autonomy. India may become a free nation. It just needs a lot more political power to do it. Hmm. Interesting. A free India could actually be quite powerful, because I think they'll then lose a bunch of their penalties. There's the Royal Tank Corps. We also got some basic organization finished. That was a technology. <coughs> And we are in 38. The next text of these are not until 39. I'm not really bothered about bomb factor, uh, factory vulnerability. We got the text here that I need. We could start working on improved 
decimetric radar, but no, I think we'll wait on that. We could probably do with having marines. Yeah, let's research marines. And here we go, heavy armoured division. Requires 225 heavy tanks. What about heavy support? Requires 150 and 75 support tanks. What the hell are support tanks? Well, I guess one thing that we could do is compare the difference in these templates. Like, what do they actually do? So the heavy armor division has more soft attack, more hard attack, more defense, more breakthrough, more armor, more piercing, oh no, same piercing. They are identical. Except the heavy armor division template is just better. I don't get it. I don't get the point of those. Well, seeing as I'm currently researching the hurricane, I think that spending 21 days on this is probably useful. And what does that lead to? Naval Bombers Patrol, Air Support Doctrine, Strap Bomb Tactical, 50 Research Bonus for Fighter Models, Air Bases. Huzzah! Oh, but the... Yeah, Chief of Staff Committee is quite useful. Division Organization, Planning Speed, Command Power Gain. Command power increase, doctrine cost. Uh, yeah, that is actually really powerful. So we kind of want to get to that if we can. This one we probably want to get in July, requires one of the following. So Women's Land Army is population reduction, stability increase, construction speed. That's a huge construction speed buff. And it immediately jumps us to extensive conscription. Hmm. Okay, so I think we're going to do Royal Air Force because we're doing that technology now. And then I think we're going to start working on those. Ah, subscriptions coming through. Excellent. So, who have we got? We have got... Oh, quite a few of you, actually. I have to scroll. Rallinator coming in with a 15-month resub. Thank you very much for that, Rallinator. Silver Knight coming in with a 28-month Resubscription at tier 2. Thank you very much for the ongoing support there, Silver Knight. I catch up live at last. Heck yeah. Mordred coming in with a six-month prime resub. Thank you very much for that, Mordred. And we had a hype train, which came and went. And then Lil Thompson has a 23-month, just one month short of getting those orange wings. Prime resub. And then also English Helfrick coming in with a 22-month, just two months short of those orange wings for the English Helfrick. And that will, of course, be a very proud moment. So thank you everyone for all of the uh, support. Really do appreciate that. You guys basically are allowing me to actually live in Stockholm. <laughs> like Paradox pay, it's all right. But I would be in like this size permanently. But the, uh, the income from uh, streaming and YouTube is allowing me to upgrade a bit. So thank you for that, everyone. And allows me to actually be on Sodom Holm, which is the island where Paradox itself is based as opposed to on the outskirts. Again, kind of where I am now. And it's funny, one of the, like, my backup apartment is on the road to the station from here. It's, it's really close to where I live now. And that would have been, like, my permanent place. I mean, it's a brand new build. The, the apartment blocks actually look pretty nice. But it's in a really quiet area and it is a fair ways out of Stockholm. Well, not a fair way, as I'm being a bit unfair there. It's, it's outside of, like, the in, the the ring road. 
around Stockholm. That's how I describe it. Uh, right, how are we doing with the tank production and stuff? We still have no heavy tanks, and that's because I think we only have the one factory on it. I don't want to reduce the number of Spitfire, so it's also because the production efficiency is just so bad. Have we at least overcome our deficit on trucks? Nearly. We're getting very, very close to that. That's good. Are we still training? We are still training. Good. And we'll keep that going as well. All right. Our army is so freaking small. It's tiny. Royal Air Force. Oh, wait, we researched Mountaineers already. No, no, we didn't. Nine more days. Okay. So that was the Royal Air Force buff. We are not going to work on the others yet. I think we're now going to do no further appeasement in order to get to a position where we can kickstart the war economy as soon as we go to war. But here's the thing, I don't know that I know... Construction speed, that's a lot of construction speed. We lose 15% war support though if we do Women's Land Army. I don't think I can do that until we're actually at war. Appeasement has failed, and to continue this policy now is folly. It is clear our enemies will not back down and insist on demanding more and more. We must stop them now before we give them even more advantages. Although they still haven't done Sudetenland. I think I want to wait until Sudetenland for that. Huzzah! In which case... Well, first of all, I need to choose you, and then I need to say, begin on the... Was that one each for the Blackburn? How did that work again? It's one each, okay. Wanted to make sure I wasn't going to use up my 200% tech bonus there. So it's currently 88 days. I don't think that updates automatically. And it will keep this. Yeah, 35 days. You have to do that, switch them around. So we get the Hurricane Mark 1s in just 35 days, which would be nice. Britannia rules, rules the waves for the Naval Doctrines. That'll allow me to get some escort stuff going. And then also, 10% <laughs> faster construction of uh, frigates. You know what I need? I need faster frigate construction. I need to have my 30% cost reduction Huzzah. here. In the long shadow of the Royal Navy, other naval powers are forced to come up with innovative new doctrines to compensate. We must not grow complacent and rely solely on the quantity and quality of individual ships. Glad to be able to catch a stream on the new schedule at last. Huzzah! What do you think is the minimum of land doctrines you need to finish before the war starts? Zero. <laughs> My bold master, you are putting far too much thought in trying to get doctrines before the war starts. Doctrines, especially with not one step back, more of a during the war thing. There are a couple of major powers like Germany which should get two or three of them probably before the war begins. But like the Netherlands? None. Huzzah! Is this a mod? Yes, this is World of Blaze. And Silver Knight gifted a sub to Colinus. Thank you very much for that Silver Knight. And that is 500 subs that you've now gifted on this channel. That's crazy. And Charlotte Holland, congratulations on the gifted sub courtesy of Silver Knight. So Urian has come in with a 23 month primary sub. Thank you very much for that. Just one more month again for the Orange Wings. I feel like there's a lot of Orange Wing anniversaries coming up soon. What the heck did I do 23 months ago? <laughs> that brought so many people to the channel. Because whatever it was, thank you, Past Mordred. <laughs> Because the real thing that you want to do with the experience in the pre-war period, I think, is form up your uh, divisions. Make sure your templates are good. That's personally where my priority lies. I mean, I can't really show you exactly how I've done things here because this is a mod and things work differently. 
but my this is uh, do, 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 doctrine. See here, I've got one naval doctrine, which is literally fleet and being, which I started with. I've got zero air doctrines, and I have three army doctrines as the UK in 1938. Could have been when you added drink tea to the channel point rewards. That's true. It could have been. Speaking of which, I have tea I could be drinking. I should. Basic medicine, nice. And we just got a bunch of military factories which would suggest that the heavy tanks are now in full production. Interesting. I don't think I really care about paratroopers. I don't really care about this until I think the war actually begins. Uh, we could get the cruiser Mark IIs. But again, this is a support tank. I don't understand what support tanks are for. Do we have a support tank already? We do. Well, if I get the Cruiser Mark II, I can at least compare it directly to the Matilda Mark II. And I have a 200% research buff on this, so I might as well use it. And then in terms of production, I think I want to double down on the heavy tanks. There's the mountain infantry. Good stuff. Let's take a look at artillery, where we can upgrade our defensive emplacements, which is AT upgrades. That sounds good to me. Then... I was going to do something, I've totally forgotten what it was. Huzzah! It wasn't tanks. It wasn't ships. <laughs> Mountaineers, that was it. I wanted to see if we get a Mountaineer template. We did not. So I think what I... Mm, this is going to be expensive. I want to convert the mountain infantry into mountaineers. But it's going to be very pricey in terms of point usage. Can I... No, because it actually costs points to remove. And then cost points to upgrade. Is it going to be cheaper? No, probably. Maybe. Let's go with horse drawn logistics. Assault engineers. Motorized recon. Wow, Motorized Recon has significantly more hit points. And that's what I could afford. So, no, I don't think it's worth building this from scratch. A bit disappointed I didn't get a template with that. Oh well. Not, no step back, changed quite a lot, and thanks again for explaining everything quite clearly. More to teach people how the game works, and nice. thank you for that. Yeah, no worries. How many hours do I have in Hard to Find 4? Well, actually, today, I think, is going to mark the day that I hit 2,500. Because I'm currently on 2,498.7 hours. Alright, um, so we do now have political power to promote somebody.
And as much as I would love to have that consumer goods factory production. No, sorry, not concerned. As much as I would love to have the stability in factory and dockyard output, I still don't think it's worthwhile. Theorist, not at this point. So these are all military high command, so we can have up to six of them. Division attrition is always good. Motorized, we are using motorized. And he is a genius. And yeah, I would definitely like to have David Sterling at some point, but I'm, I'm actually thinking Richard O'Connor is the one that we probably want to start with. Yeah, see you, Kalinas. This will use up some of our command power limits, but I think that's all right. We could also do propaganda because war support is going to be decreasing weekly. And the propaganda would offset that partially. Have I developed my colonies? Yep. Completed the whole bunch, including three nation solution, which I probably shouldn't have. That pissed India off, but I did these ones. In fact, because I've done so much, India is actually on the verge of becoming independent. They have the autonomy for it now, they just need the political power. I mean, part of the question here also is who am I going to have in command of my forces? So, the two field marshals we have at the moment, Montgomery and Brooke. Walk and lack would be another good choice. So would Richie. Dempsey. I keep on forgetting how good Dempsey is. Do I want to just straight up promote Dempsey to a field marshal? I think I do. Because he is that good. And we're going to make Dempsey our field marshal. He's got a bunch of traits that he can use, including his brilliant strategist giving him aggressive assaulter. Then officer core rules. Division organization would be nice. Requires organization first. Division speed is aggressive assaulter, which he's going to have. So let's get you aggressive assaulter. Let's get you offensive doctrine. And then we basically need you to get organizer and then logistics wizard. But we'll hold off on that point. And bearing in mind that all of his stats are reduced by one at the moment because he's recently promoted. Which will go away. Okay, so our infantry commander. Actually, before we do that, let's decide on our garrison commander, which I think is going to be... 
Brook. Is Monty my warfare expert? No, Alexander is. Yeah, these ones do also level up. So we want to make sure that uh, Harold Alexander is in a position of power. Although Alexander, we may not want to keep there necessarily. Because he's experience gain. Whereas Montgomery... Oh, he's also experience and infantry doctrine cost. Alexander is all doctrine cost. Yeah, Alexander is just better. I just need to get him the experience. He needs to get to level 6. So, kind of thinking, how do I want to do that? Put Alexander in charge of the infantry? Although Orkinlek is just a lot better in that job. Orkinlek's also the logistics guy, and I definitely like logistics because that reduces attrition. Do we have anyone that's good with motorized? We have several tank people, including Oliver Campbell. Oh, sorry, not Oliver Campbell. Uh, Jock Campbell, who is our tank guy. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to split out the Royal Tank Regiment, which at the moment is kind of rubbish, not going to lie. We'll split out the colonial infantry. So these are the regular infantry, which will be like the heavy hitters. That's probably going to be under Orkinlek. No, Harold Alexander is going to be in charge of them. These guys, I think, are going to be my Africa Corps. You are going to be under Montgomery, because you are the logistics expert. You have to supply things. And this is going to be Orkinlek, because he's got crazy good supply. And then this is going to be my Britain Defence Force. Alexander in charge of the infantry. Motorised Richie? Yeah, I think that's going to be Richie. And the tanks is going to be Campbell. Oh no, sorry. Motorized is O'Connor. Because he is literally the motorized guy. And then that means that tanks is going to be Campbell. 